Hi everyone, Tim here. So a couple of months ago, I put out a video about the Give Energy app. Some of you may have seen that. Uh, and it turns out that uh, some of the guys from Give Energy actually watched the video and they invited us up to visit their HQ. And I thought that would be a great opportunity to go and ask them a load of questions that I've had for a, a little while and some of, some of the uh, viewers out there in viewer land have uh, asked me about as well. So um, Kat and I drove up there a couple of weeks ago and we had a great old chat. We spent a couple of hours there and uh, we spoke to um, a load of people. We um, met up with Paul Landrigan, um, who let me just uh, let me just make sure that I've got, uh, got all of these right. Uh, Paul is the head of system testing and security. Um, and we also chatted with um, Mick Smith, who's the head of integration soft and software delivery. And we spent about an hour chatting with those two um, about all the technical aspects and details of, uh, of all the kit and um, various questions that I had. So after that, we spent about another hour with Jason Howlett, the CEO, and Dan Lambert, the technical director, um, chatting about the plans that they've got for expansion and building factories and uh, all that stuff. So I'll just take you through what happened during the day and uh, I'll intersperse that with a few clips that I took. Uh, so yeah, the first uh, thing we did was we, we met up with Paul Landrigan. Um, some of you may know Paul on from the Facebook group. Uh, he's quite active there. And uh, we uh, he took us through to the um, the training room where they have all their kit and they can uh, uh, train people in how to install it and stuff like that. So yeah, we um, we had a great chat with uh, with Mick and, and Paul uh, and one of the important questions that I wanted to ask them was um, how force charging and discharging your battery affects the lifetime. Um, and uh, basically they said it's completely designed uh, for that purpose. The warranty is, is 10 years on the batteries um, and after that time if your battery is less than 70% of its original capacity. Um, there will be um, some claim for, for on the warranty that you can make. And uh, depending on you know how much time is left and how much uh, the battery capacity is degraded, it's a sort of sliding scale as to how much support they would offer to help replace that battery, of course. So if it fails really early, you'd probably get a new battery, but if it failed after nine years or if it just dipped below 70% after 10 years, um, then you might just get a small contribution towards uh, a replacement battery, that sort of thing. Um, but it's completely designed for uh, cycling. Um, the warranty is infinite cycles, so uh, you can charge it and discharge it as much as you like. It's, that's, that's its purpose after all. So if that's the sort of thing you want to do, um, knock yourself out. Um, we tend to dis uh, charge up our battery a little bit during the night, then top it up during the day with excess solar, and then we force ch force discharge it for two hours during the uh, the, the octopus flux peak period, um, and that's completely fine. Um, it won't really um, damage the battery in any way, um, and uh, it's very unlikely to to reduce its working lifetime. Uh, so that's uh, really reassuring, and it means that uh, I'm going to continue doing that. And if that's the sort of thing that you do. Um, you know, you can feel um, comfortable continuing to do that as well. Uh, the other question I had about was about the uh, the inverter temperature because um, obviously when you're force discharging, my inverter certainly gets very hot uh, and uh, it tends to plateau out, out at about 50 degrees after a couple of hours and doesn't tend to get much hotter than that. But I was a bit worried that that was going to be something that would degrade the performance of the inverter over time and maybe um, wear it out uh, sooner than, than it might otherwise. But um, Paul reassured me that it is designed for that as well, obviously. Um, so yeah. It should be completely fine um, for to run your, uh, you know, do that force discharging, and neither your inverter nor your batteries should suffer um, any, you know, any damage that would uh, that would not normally be uh, accounted for in the normal operating lifetime. Because that's the whole point; they're designed for that sort of thing. So uh, yeah, feel free to use you use your battery and inverter uh, uh, in whatever way you you choose. It should be completely fine. And if it does fail there, then the inverter has a five-year warranty and the batteries have a 10-year warranty, so it's all good. So the other thing that I was very keen to see while we were there was the new all-in-one uh, battery that they've uh, recently released. Now, uh, Paul was very kind to, to give us a demonstration of the uh, the backup functionality where the Give Energy gateway that, that comes with the, um, the all-in-one battery uh, is able to isolate you from the grid in the event of a power cut, and it does that completely seamlessly and automatically, and it happens in less than uh, 20 milliseconds. Uh, and uh, yeah, what I'll do is I'll, I'll just um, overlay some video of, uh, of Paul doing that demonstration now so, you can, so he can tell you uh, how it works and, uh, and do that demo. We're gonna simulate off-grid. Three, two, one, we're now off the grid. Did you did anyone even realise the grid's gone off? No. Three, two, one, back on the grid. So there you go, more or less seamless and completely unnoticeable if you, you probably wouldn't even realise that you'd had a power cut, in fact. 
Uh, so yeah, the the, um, the Give Energy All-in-One battery uh, has got a very high discharge rate of about, what is it, uh, six kilowatts. So even if you were running quite a lot of stuff in your house at the moment of the power cut, it would probably still uh, cope quite well. And if you happened to breach six kilowatts during a power cut, what happens is the inverter starts beeping really loudly apparently um, to let you know that um, you've got about, I think it's 30 seconds or something like that before uh, the inverter will shut off. So uh, you can you know, reduce the load on in, in your house to below that six kilowatt limit and then the, the inverter will be uh, perfectly happy to carry on uh, under that sort of load. Uh, so yeah, that was really interesting to see. You can see um, we uh, we actually took the cover off the the battery so that we the, so that we could see the inverter and the four battery modules inside, um, and uh, that was really interesting because it means that basically you can replace individual components from the Give Energy all-in-one battery um, if any one of those battery units failed, for example, you could just replace that one battery. Uh, the battery units themselves have a warranty of 10 years and the inverter has a warranty of five years, I believe. Uh, check the, um, uh, the data sheet just to, just to make sure, but I think that's, those, are the, uh, those are the warranty specs. And, and it also makes installation a lot easier, obviously, because um, you can put the, the chassis in place. Um, it's floor mounted, by the way. You don't mount this on the wall. It's got little feet that, uh, um, that um, uh, can be adjusted to make it level. Um, but it's yes, yeah, designed to stand on the floor. I think you can uh, bolt it to the wall just to, for stability. Um, and then the uh, individual battery components can can be uh, inserted individually. So uh, yeah, that makes installation super easy, which was really neat. Uh, and Paul also showed us inside the, the the Give Energy gateway, which was super interesting. Uh, didn't didn't mean a lot to me, I've got to say. Um, but yeah, lots of interesting electronics going on in there, um, and uh, space for CT clamps and uh, different inputs and, and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, that was really interesting. But one other question I had about the uh, the Give Energy gateway was whether or not it could be fitted to existing systems like my own. So I've got the the you know, five kilowatt uh, Gen 2 hybrid inverter coupled with a, a nine and a half and a 5.2 kilowatt hour battery. Um, and I was interested to know if um, I would be able to, at some point in the future, install a gateway, for example, and uh, have that operate uh, in tandem with the, the other kit. Now, um, technically, yes, uh, the answer is that you can do that. It's, a, it's currently uh, what they call a non-standard configuration, which means that if you did do that, um, you probably would probably best to give them a call to make sure that you set it up correctly. So that then also made me wonder whether the all-in-one battery could be added on as an additional component to an existing system like what we've got. And again, the answer was technically yes, it is possible because with the gateway in control of the system, um, it should be possible to run the all-in-one plus some other batteries and an inverter um, all together. Although again, it's, an, it's a non-standard configuration. So it's the sort of thing that it would need a bit of uh, specialist support from Give Energy to make sure that it's all set up properly. So I don't think that's anything we're likely to do anytime soon, certainly within the next couple of years, but it's good to know that it's um, something we could do if we wanted to upgrade the system later with a bit of extra capacity to help us through the winter, for example, when we're running our, our air-to-air heat pump system. Uh, and we won't have enough capacity in the existing system to cover all of our heating needs. But yeah, something to keep an eye on. Um, if uh, I do go down that route, you'll certainly know about it and I'll uh, be sure to cover it all on the channel. I also asked Paul and Mick about uh, these tariff automations that I've spotted in the uh, the app and the portal. So um, when I look on the smart tariff section of the app uh, and the portal, it shows these tariff automations, but currently it's completely empty. So I'm on Octopus Flux, um, and now I assumed that these tariff automations existed for other tariffs, but not necessarily Octop um, Octopus Flux at this time. Um, now apparently, uh, these are coming soon. Uh, Mick has actually been writing writing these automations. So these automations are designed to work in tandem with your smart tariff. So for example, we're on Octopus Flux, so we have a, an off-peak period and a peak period. So you could set up uh, the automation with various parameters to say, charge up to a certain uh, level at, when the price is low and discharge your battery uh, either down to a certain level or for a certain length of time during the peak period. So it's similar to what I'm currently doing with the scheduler. Um, so I've set up a, a charging schedule and a discharging schedule, but you um, probably have more control over it. Um, there'll be more parameters uh, compared to what you can currently do with the scheduler. Uh, so that's uh, I'm looking forward to those, uh, those tariff uh, options coming along. Apparently that, those are due soon. Um, so yeah, um, as soon as those become available, I'll let you know because I'll give them a try. This is a bit like with um, what uh, Intelligent Octopus Flux is going to be doing uh, where uh, Octopus take control of your uh, battery instead of you. Um, so this is a bit like that, but you're still in control of it. So it would be um, something that you could use for the standard Octopus Flux tariff, for example, rather than having to go on to Intelligent Flux. 
Um, so yeah, that'll be really interesting. Um, speaking of intelligent octopus flux, I, um, I spoke to Mick about that and he says, so he works very closely with octopus um, because he's writing all of these automations. And he said that um, uh, intelligent octopus flux will never discharge your battery outside of the peak period. So this is something some people uh, had questions about um, in my comments in my earlier videos about intelligent octopus flux. Uh, and some people were worried that Octopus would discharge the battery during the, the standard period. Um, and apparently that's not going to be the case. Octopus will only discharge the battery during the peak period. So uh, hopefully that reassures you. Um, obviously no, nobody's on Octopus Intelligent Flux yet. Uh, but, so we don't really know exactly how it's going to work. But uh, Mick assures me that that's, that's the way it's going to work. It's never going to be operated in such a way as to be detrimental to the user. Which makes a lot of sense because if obviously um, if Octopus started messing around with your battery in ways that you weren't keen on, you just switch away from that tariff. So there'd be no reason for them to do it. Uh, so hopefully that's the that's going to be the case, um, and it'll be really interesting to see how that how that actually works in practice. So the other thing we spoke about a little bit was the EV charger, which uh, is obviously this mythical uh, piece of kit that uh, has been coming soon on their website for a long time now. Now they actually had one uh, installed on the outside of their building, and it was plugged into one of their um, one of their cars, and it was. It working, it's operational, it's a real thing, uh, and apparently it's due to, to arrive in October. So um, if that's something that you've been waiting for, um, you've not got that much longer to wait, and uh, I'm hoping to get my hands on one um, pretty soon uh, after it releases, and obviously I, I'll be uh, doing lots of videos about that, um, and uh, it'll be interesting to see how it operates in practice. Uh, having it all sort of integrated with the, the battery and everything else uh, should make life a bit easier, hopefully. So yeah, I'm looking forward to getting my hands on that, and uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. So that was more or less our time with uh, with Mick and Paul. Uh, one thing they did let slip uh, near the end was that um, the all-in-one battery might have a bit more capacity than is actually written on the side of the box. Uh, they said that um, they've released it in a sort of um, a sort of safe state at the moment, where they're they're very confident on the claims of 13 and a half kilowatt hours. But actually, obviously, there's a little bit more capacity in there to account for the depth of discharge, to, so that they could say that the depth of discharge is 100%. But obviously, there's a little bit of capacity held in reserve. Now it's possible that they might be able to release a little bit extra of that capacity um, with a firmware update in the future. So keep your eyes peeled for that one. So I don't know how official that is, by the way. It's entirely possible that will never materialize, um, but it's interesting to know that that's a possibility. So if you have an all-in-one battery, you might wake up one day to find a little bit extra capacity in there. So you never know. Uh, let's hope so. So that was more or less it for the technical part of our visit. Uh, we then spent another hour or so speaking with uh, Jason, the CEO, and Dan, the technical director, um, up in Jason's office, uh, mostly about their plans for the future. Um, in particular, um, they've got big plans for expanding into um, different parts of the world, like uh, Europe and Australia, the Middle East and Africa, for example. So a bit closer to home, they've actually bought the building next door to their current HQ, which is apparently three times the size, which gives them loads of room for expansion, uh, in particular increasing the number of, of support staff. Uh, so that's really useful. So they've also got big plans for a, uh, a battery manufacturing facility in the UK, which um, is really reassuring. I think um, a lot of people will be uh, pleased to see that. But I also had some questions for Jason around their plans for future products. So the one piece of kit that's missing from their current lineup, apart from the EV charger, which is coming soon, um, is a solar diverter. So it turns out that they do have plans for a solar, solar diverter, but it's in the order of a year away. So don't expect that anytime soon, um, but it's good to know that's on the cards. Uh, and I had questions also about um, whether they were uh, intending to explore different battery chemistries for their, for their batteries. Obviously all of their batteries are currently lith lithium iron phosphate, LFP. Um, but uh, I was keen to know if they had um, plans for things like sodium ion batteries, for example. Um, now, Jason said that sodium ion probably wasn't going to be uh, something they were going to look into, but he did mention that they were exploring um, the possibility of using um, LMFP, which is lithium manganese iron phosphate, in uh, some future batteries. So that's how that has the advantage of a, of a higher energy density um, compared to the current lithium ion phosphate batteries. Um, so that'll be really interesting uh, to see if that comes, uh, comes along at some point in the future. Um, but I can't give you any timescales on that sort of thing. The other thing that some of my viewers have been interested to know is um, whether or not there's any plans for um, having a completely offline mode, basically. Uh, at the moment, all of their inverters and batteries require an internet connection to function properly. Um, but uh, apparently there are plans for being able to operate completely um, offline with local only, um, where basically you can control all of your data. And so that'd be really interesting. It means that none of your data, uh, you don't need to rely on the Give Energy servers um, to uh, maintain your data or anything like that. So all of the Give Energy Energy servers are based in the UK just so that you know but it's good to know that if you really wanted to you could take control of your your own data yourself uh, I'm not sure exactly when that's uh, planned for but uh, apparently it is being worked on so expect an announcement at some point in the future 
So the other thing that we saw while we were there that was really interesting was a very large container that was sat just outside uh, their building near to the where the EV charger was installed uh, and it was absolutely rammed full of uh, batteries. Now this is a sort of commercial scale venture that they're, they're, um, they're working on where you could provide um, large scale battery uh, installations for um, backup for buildings. So yeah, it was interesting to see that they've got plans for expanding into that sort of commercial scale market rather than uh, just the domestic market that they're currently in. So that was it. Kat and I really enjoyed our time at the Give Energy HQ, chatting to all the nice people there. Uh, thanks very much again to Paul for inviting us up there. And I hope you found that interesting. And I hope that I asked all the right questions and got all the answers that you were hoping for. If there's any other questions you have for Give Energy, uh, please drop them in the comments below and uh, I'll forward those on and hopefully get an answer to, uh, for you if it's not something I know already. But for now, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.